welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. I'm out in the woods, as you do, to feature a field watch and in honor of the movie Tenant, which has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. <laughs> welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Mm. Welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Oh yeah. <laughs> field khaki automatic, the 38 millimeter version. Good Lord, there's a bug on it. Welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. In honor of the Christopher Nolan film Tenet coming out, which features a Hamilton watch, one that I really can't wrap my head around yet, I too am featuring a Hamilton watch today, the Hamilton Khaki Field Automatic, the 38 millimeter version, which coincidentally was featured in the Liam Neeson film, A Walk Among the Tombstones. So pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. So let's awkwardly bend over a table and take a look at this watch. All right, guys, welcome, welcome. On my wrist today is gonna be a 1970s Timex on a leather benchmark basic strap off of Amazon. Uh, those straps are pretty cheap, but they're pretty good. And um, I think it looks pretty sweet on this Timex. And here is today's watch perp. This is gonna be the Hamilton Field Khaki Automatic. This is the 38 millimeter version. It is 11 mil thick. It's got a lug to lug of 46 millimeters, a, a lug width of 20 millimeters. Fun fact before I get started about this watch, this is a, a watch that Liam Neeson wore in A Walk Among the Tombstones. So pretty cool to have a watch that Liam Neeson wore in a movie. And oddly enough, there was a spin-off movie of Walk Among the Tombstones that the Muppets did. And yeah, um, didn't really go over too well. <laughs> Boy, you gotta be a serious Muppets fan to get that joke. So you've got an all 316L stainless steel case, a polished bezel, a crown, a push-pull crown, no screw-down crown today, a domed sapphire crystal, slightly domed sapphire crystal, so all good there. This watch is going to be powered by the Hamilton H10 movement which is a modified 2824-2 movement. Uh, not sure what they did to it, probably threw a couple of more jewels in it, uh, something along those lines, but it is modified. And the beat rate was slowed down from 28,800 vibrations per hour to 21,600 vibrations per hour. And that gives this movement an 80 hour power reserve, 80 hour power reserve, which is highly unusual for a watch of uh, automatic nature. A display case back with a sapphire crystal displaying the Hamilton H10 movement. You can see they did some work on the rotor there, some uh, cutouts to it. There's a cool little, uh, I guess that's an H logo in there and the word Hamilton on the logo. 25 jewels in this bad boy today. It is Swiss made on the case back. It is screw down displaying a water resistant 10 bar. So it's a hundred meter water resistant watch Swiss made. And then the reference number is H704450. And then something over here that I don't know what it is, but I can only assume that that is the serial number of the watch. Now you will notice that I am being a total punk again, and this is not the strap that the watch comes on. I have it on a Mora NATO. MoraWatchStraps.com is uh, really great. Uh, these NATOs are really close to my favorite NATO, the Omega NATO, but they are like a tenth of the price. I think I picked this up for sixteen dollars, and it is just absolutely outstanding. The Strap that the watch comes on currently is going to be, and I will put it on in a little bit, but this is gonna be uh, a leather strap from Hamilton, uh, brown leather strap that it comes on. The hardware on it is very substantial and nice, a uh, stainless steel Hamilton buckle that is all brushed with the Hamilton uh, logo etched into it. It is a pretty substantial strap. Well, one thing that is interesting about this one is that it uh, is a little thicker at the end that you attach to the watch and it slowly tapers down to almost nothing when you get to the buckle. So good taper there in thickness. The dial of the watch does not have applied indices. They are going to be all printed and loomed. 
allegedly loomed. I will get into that in just a moment. Uh, you have a minute track around the outside of the dial. And you'll notice there are uh, three different sections to this dial. There's a kind of a glossy black middle dial with the Hamilton logo, uh, khaki automatic, and then military time from 13 to 24. So it's always nice to have military time. Some of the work I do, I do need military time to reference quickly. So this watch is good for that. And then you have a recessed kind of, um, circular ringed section it looks kind of like a record if uh, any of you kids out there know what records are uh it looks like that i believe they're called concentric uh, if i'm not mistaken if you look over by the uh the uh date window you can see it a little bit better there but there is a framed date window and the third section is going to be that minute track around the outside with a very fine uh I believe it's a tenth of a second markings all the way around. Uh, it does have uh, loomed uh, dots all the way around it, all of the Arabic numerals. The hands are going to be syringe style. It's very accurate uh, measurement of exactly what time it is to the tenth of the minute, I believe. Yeah, I think it's a tenth of a minute. But you can see it there uh, down by the five, slowly moving into place. So very accurate as far as knowing exactly what time your watch is saying. So what attracted me to this watch was that second hand. Beautiful looking second hand, uh, spear style uh, with a red tip that reaches all the way to the end of the minute track, which is something that I think a lot of companies can take a note from, uh, I think it just looks outstanding uh, when the second hand does reach all the way. This watch does hack and it does hand wind. I do not hand wind this movement. And the reason is uh, allegedly, and I've read stories about this, that the 2824-2 uh, movement, the weak point of that particular movement is the winding. So you can wind it and then eventually uh, supposedly it will break and then you won't be able to hand wind the watch anymore. The watch wouldn't be broken at that point. You just give her a little shake and she will go. So that's actually how I start this watch up every time I'm going to wear it. If I haven't worn it in a while, uh, I do just shake it and for a little bit, maybe like 10, 15 seconds, very lightly and she's good to go. And I haven't had it stop on me at all, uh, doing it that way. So that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, just to keep uh, wear and tear off the movement. But the regulation of this movement uh, with the beat rate being slowed down to 21,600 vibrations per hour, Hamilton's actually been able to make these extremely accurate. I think this one's running about uh, plus six uh, seconds a day and that's within uh, cost specifications. So that's really cool at a watch uh, of this price. So you will notice that the crystal does not appear to have any sort of anti-reflective coating. Uh, the way I've done the lighting setup here today, it, it's actually working pretty well, but if I, I get it just right, I think, hello, hi, how are you? You can see, uh, see me in it. So it is very reflective and there's no evidence that uh, there's any anti-reflective coating on this particular crystal. And also let's check out the loom. So the loom on this, uh, all of the Arabic numerals are loomed and the uh, hands, the hour and minute hand are loomed. The second hand is not loomed. There's also loom dots all around the outside of the Arabic numerals. And as you can see, those fade extremely fast. And I've got to be honest with you guys, this loom is crap, absolute crap. I'm not sure why they did not invest a little bit more time in, in making this uh, this loom better. Uh, I believe it is a C3 Super Luminova. Uh, the hands clearly hold on better than the Arabic numerals. So really, you know, if you have the watch turn like this or whatever, you're, you're not gonna know what time it is in the dark. And for a field watch, that's a huge problem. So what do I like about this watch? Well, it is beautiful. It really is a beautiful watch. I like the polished uh, bezel that uh, really, uh, you know, shines in the light. Um, like I said, I love that second hand. That's what attracted me to this watch. 
I do like how versatile it is. I have it on this uh, Mora strap, as I said, and you know it works on many, many different types of straps. Primarily, I wear it on a uh, oyster style bracelet that I, and please don't ask me for a link or anything. I, I got that off, I believe, a, a Bleager GMT watch from several years ago. I don't even remember, because you know I've been accused of just having watch parts lying around you know, that I just, you know, fiddle with. And that is accurate. I do do have a lot of that. And I found that bracelet fit reasonably well. I did have to bend the spring bars and uh, things of that nature. And it was a pain in the butt to get on. I really didn't want to take it off for this review, but uh, I did anyway. So I could show you the, uh, the actual strap that goes on it. I like the uh, changing of the date. I got this watch set, so I really don't want to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm actually trying to time the accuracy over uh, uh, several days. Uh, but the, the changing of it, of the date, is actually very, very similar to my Omega Seamaster 300M. It's almost identical. And the font in, is also pretty much identical uh, to that, the, the font of the numerals in the date window. So really cool there. Uh, the hand winding, I did try it a little bit. It You know, it is a little bit, you know, gritty. It, it doesn't really vote a lot of confidence uh, in the winding but i'm told people really don't have a problem with this but i'm just not going to take the risk with the hand winding i like the thinness uh it's very thin you know 11 millimeters thick and that's right pretty much at what the uh, omega seamaster 300m uh the one that i have from 1999 and th that's what i like about that watch too it's very thin slides under the cuff very easily uh, i think you can wear this as a dress watch obviously as a sporty tool watch 100 meters of water resistance. Um, again, people say they take these swimming all the time, never had a problem. I don't do that really with uh, watches that don't uh, screw down uh, the crown anyway. It does have a screw down case back, but I don't know. 100 meters, yeah, I, yes, I'm sure that it's fine, but for me, that's just a little bit too risky without a screw down crown. And I forgot to mention the crown is also signed. And apparently I've already scratched this I don't know how I did that. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh well. And why do I think it could be possibly overrated? Well, the loom is atrocious. And for a field watch, I just don't understand that. If you're going to use this, you know, as a military style, style watch, and Hamilton has supplied watches for military uh, over the years in World War II, I just think that's a huge failure of this watch i mean you obviously if you're a military guy you need to be able to see at nighttime and i i don't i don't get that i don't i don't understand why they why they didn't uh spend a little more time on the loom because certainly at this price i i don't think it would have jacked the price up anymore but uh yeah that's a fail and also for a field watch no anti-reflective coating uh, you know on the the sapphire crystal Again, you're outside. I mean, if you're in the, the woods, I mean, the trees reflect off of this. There are serious legibility problems with this watch. It, it's very legible if you have it turned the right way, but if you're doing a quick glance and you're outside, I, it's almost unreadable, and, and that that's a miss for me. Uh, so, you know, to, to claim that this is the best watch that money can buy, which is, has been several youtube reviewers have said that I, I just don't think that that's the case um of course off the top of my head i can't tell you what watch would be but uh, i do like this watch but those two failures and again the the eta 2824 with the hand winding i don't know i understand the 80 hour power reserve but i mean i kind of don't like why do you need 80 hours of power reserve and I know that it's, you know, say, you know, you use this at work all week and then you take it off on Friday and you want to pick it up on Monday and not have to reset it. Well, yeah, OK, but I kind of would have liked to have the twenty eight thousand eight hundred vibrations per hour and a 40 hour power reserve. I think that would have been a little bit better. Or you could put a movement in there that that is a little bit more, you know, robust in the fact that you know this movement does have a failure point and i don't know if that's been corrected by hamilton or not i i don't know and if it has then i, I certainly will take it back but uh, yeah i don't know and there it is on the leather strap that the watch comes on the strap is very 
very stiff, very stiff. Um, I'm sure it breaks in over time. Uh, but one thing that uh, I've noticed uh, in pictures online is these buckle holes, they stretch. And mine is even stretched. I wore this for about 30 minutes on the strap and the holes were already beginning to stretch and I'm not really wearing it too tight. I know it probably looks like I am because I'm kind of chubby right now. So don't really hold me too much accountable for that. But yeah, so the strap over time, I don't know if that's really gonna hold up, you know, and, and certainly at a watch uh, of this price, you, you want a good, reliable strap that's gonna last you, you know, pretty much forever. And you can get it on a steel bracelet, and that is what I would recommend if you guys are interested in getting this watch. Get it on the steel bracelet. Uh, that uh, bracelet appears, I haven't seen it in person, it appears to be pretty good. Just two micro adjustment holes on the clasp of that, but uh, you know, that's the way I would go because this leather strap, it's actually quite uncomfortable to be honest with you, and, and you, I know you guys probably won't agree with me. But yeah, it's um, the quality is good, but again, you know, quality, yes, other than the hole stretching, which that I don't, that's pretty inexcusable to only have it on for 30 minutes and to have that happen. But you can see, very thin, uh, very nice. So guys, I know a lot of you out there have this watch, you swear by this watch. Um, is it overrated? Uh, in my opinion, I slightly, it's slightly overrated. I, I still think it's a great watch. I really do like this watch, but you know, for to claim that it's the best watch that money can buy um, is just a false statement. And even at that price, I don't think it's the best watch that you can get, uh, but it is certainly attractive. But again, look, no anti-reflective coating there so yeah but let me know in the comments i know a lot of you guys have this watch you love this watch so let me know uh your comments and if you think the shortcomings with the loom and the anti-reflective coating does that affect you in your daily life uh let me know